Republican presidential uh, hopeful sparred on NBC in their third debate, hoping to break uh, out, stand out from a shrinking field of candidates. Among the economic issues discussed, reining in spending on entitlements like Social Security. There are only three things that go into determining whether Social Security can be solvent or not. Retirement age, eligibility for the program in general, and taxes. That's it. We are already overtaxed in this country, and we should not raise those taxes. I don't know if out there tonight, and if you're watching Warren, um, I don't know if Warren Buffett is collecting Social Security, but if he is, shame on you. You shouldn't be taking the money. We should limit, limit benefits on the wealthy. Bernie Marcus can tell you he hates getting that check. Limit the benefits on the we wealthy, and then expand Medicare Advantage plans. If we're going to actually tame this tiger, the way you do it is not by picking on seniors who have paid into a program that deserve their money coming back out to them. The way you deal with it is, number one, you have to grow your economy. Joining us now is Mark Short, former chief of staff to Vice President Mike Pence and former White House a director of legislative affairs for President uh, Donald Trump. Mark, uh, it's been a while. It's good to see you. We have had your former boss uh, on a number of times where he has, like, not only touched the third rail, he's, like, jumped on the third rail and, and, and has been talking about entitlement and Social Security and Medicare reform. So he's not in the camp of not wanting to address that. But you could hear right there, uh, some of those candidates still are, still in denial that, that, uh, that we need to do something. Yeah, Joe, it's, the reality is it's not even really a choice. I mean, there, we are at $33 trillion in debt, but 74% of our debt today is driven by mandatory spending, our annual deficits. The reality is we can't just continue to hide and pretend the problem doesn't exist. And within just a few years, you're going to have mandatory cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Uh, people who want to do nothing are those that are going to hurt recipients the most. And yet both Joe Biden and Donald Trump's position is the same, that we should do nothing. And some of the candidates on the stage last night said the same thing. It's an incomprehensible position, and we need actually leaders who are willing to step up and begin to address the problem. The old age-old problem, Mark. Uh, if, if you say something and you can't get elected... You're not going to govern. And, you know, your Vice President Pence wasn't up there anymore. I'm, I'm not saying it was all because of uh, his stance on, on entitlement, but it takes a lot of courage. And you may end up, you know, imploding or not, not being able to win an election if you take that tougher stance. Yeah, I think the difference is that, uh, you know, a few, was it 10 years ago, you had the Democrats run the ads of, against Paul Ryan saying, push grandma off the cliff. I think that the reality is what's changed is that those automatic cuts are now really on the horizon in a very near term. And so I think we can have an honest conversation with the American people. I understand there's political liabilities with it, but I think Americans also want to have real leaders who address the real problems that are facing our country, not putting your head in the sand. And I think today, when you actually have interest rates where they are for the first time in decades, Americans are feeling the real cost of out-of-control spending. And so there's no better time to tie that to the average voter and say, what you're seeing inflation is driven in part by the reality of what our debt is and how our spending is out of control. Let me help address that problem by addressing entitlement spending and bringing down the inflation. Mark, let me ask you about uh, something that, that we were just talking about before. Uh, the interview, and, and that is, in, and I understand, I saw Larry Summers even say, you know, nobody wants to really raise taxes. What's, how about collecting the taxes from the current tax regime that, that we have? How about bringing in what, whatever it would be, billions, if you actually were, were able to do that? It, what, what is the pushback from Republicans based on in terms of funding the IRS? Is, is it is it based on a, a they, they have muscle memory from Lois Lerner and what Ob the Obama administration did with the IRS? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that for Republicans, that's a part of it. There's a, there's a, there's a recollection of feeling that the IRS has been abusive, and I think that uh, I think a preferred course here, Joe, that we aren't talking about is how about just a simpler, flatter tax code that doesn't yeah. require as big an IRS. I do think we all should be advocating that those who are not paying their taxes should be held accountable and, and there should be collection. But how about a flatter tax code that's simpler? So you wouldn't need such a behemoth IRS that has to go collect taxes on all these different carve-outs and political favors that are put in the tax code as it currently exists. 
Okay, we'll get a candidate to run on a flat tax and on reforming entitlements. He's going to get, yeah. is there well, something below 1%? There was a movie called Lesson Zero. <laughs> uh, you know, I think, Joe, I, as I said, I think that Americans are ready for people to have honest conversations with them. I recognize that in the past, entitlement reform has not been popular, but you know, Ronald Reagan did it with Tip O'Neill, and, uh, and I don't think they suffered the consequences. In fact, they helped to restore much of the stability of the entitlement program. So I'm not of the notion that if you don't explain to the American people, they're not going to comprehend it. I think there are ways candidates can do this. Mark, what I can we just go? I just want to go to the IRS question because we've been talking about it all morning. We've been talking about it well for, for like a year now. Since it happened, yeah. What I don't understand, look, I, I appreciate uh, that you have a perspective about a flat tax and effectively changing the system. Given that the system, uh, for better or worse, doesn't appear like it's going to be changed anytime soon, it seems almost antithetical uh, to everything that I think I would imagine the party feels like it represents uh, not to have accountability on things like taxes when I, I think you would be vehemently against defunding the police. The idea that somehow, you know, by the way, there were people in cities, uh, minority communities, who wanted to defund the police because they thought that they were being uh, 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 pressured and mistreated, right? Uh, but the idea that uh, you want to defund the police for the entire country's uh, tax base seems sort of like, a, to me at least, antithetical to the sort of whole idea. We talk about you know, what you want to do about immigration, letting illegal immigrants into the country or not into the country. You obviously, I imagine, would like to, to, to prevent that from happening. We talk about law and order in this country, and then for some reason, when it comes to taxes, the one thing that would help us uh, deal with our, our debts and deficits, it's like, actually, no, we would prefer not to do anything about it. Even just to have con a better consumer, um, uh, not consumer protections, just, just the consumer experience, right? To be able to call the IRS, to be able to deal with people, uh, all of that, no? Andrew, let me stipulate from the start that we should be holding people accountable. If they're not paying their taxes, they should be held accountable in the court of law. And we should have. Right, but the IRS, has, the IRS says very explicitly that they don't have the resources to, to possibly do it. And, and everybody who's ever scored these things, and it's, it's provable, empirically provable over time, that when people have made investments in the IRS, that they have actually created additional revenue. Everybody talks about growth. There's an opportunity for growth in terms of collecting additional dollars. It may be the Republican Party doesn't want to collect additional dollars and, it, and effectively wants to starve the country of money. I, that's, a different, that's a different argument. Uh, I think there's a mystique out there that there are these billionaires that aren't paying taxes, Andrew. The reality is that most of the billionaires have afforded significant tax lawyers who have these carve-outs and comply with them. The reality is that the IRS, when this happens, often ends up going after small business owners. I think that is a reality. And I think that the analogy in comparison to defunding the police, while I appreciate, I think is a little bit of a stretch because we want to have our communities protected and comparing law enforcement to an IRS, IRS tax collector is something that I think most Republican voters don't draw the equivalent. Pretty good. So I'm stipulating, I'm stipulating your, your point that we should be that people who are not paying taxes should be held accountable, but I'm not necessarily agreeing that what we need to do is just simply build a bigger IRS and that's going to help balance our deficits.